In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to give your type a very cool 3D drop shadow using the appearance window, just like the type on the left side right here. And I actually learned this very recently, and I feel a bit silly for not knowing it earlier, so I thought it'd be really cool to show you how to do it since it's a very easy to do effect that's quite powerful in its appearance. And the font I'm using for this is called Bebas, or maybe it's Bebas, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it right, but I will link it in the description of this video. It's a free font. It's actually one of my favorite free fonts out there. But like I said before, I'm using the appearance window, which I have open right here on my screen. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you have your appearance window open. It's very important. So go to window and then appearance. It's right here near the top on the window itself. And the appearance window is an extremely powerful way to give your type or objects effects that are totally non-destructive. And by that, I mean you can turn the effects on or off. It never destroys or completely modifies your work to the point that you can't turn it back off. So giving your type a 3D drop shadow just like this is actually very easy. So once you have your word typed out, you're going to want to select your type that you want to apply the drop shadow with using the selection tool. It's the black arrow. It should be V on your keyboard shortcut as a default. If you don't have your type selected and you make changes in this appearance window right here, none None of them will apply. I accidentally do that all the time. It's a little bit frustrating. So do make sure you have your type selected before you do this. So right here, you can tell that I have no stroke. If you click on this little box right here for the color of the stroke, just make sure you have none selected unless you want a stroke on your type, but none is in the upper left hand corner by default. And then I've applied an orange fill. And what we're going to want to do is actually create a new fill. And the fill button is in the lower left hand side right here. If you hover over it, it says add a new fill. It looks like a box that's filled in. Just for reference, the one on the far left is add a new stroke. So if you ever want to add a secondary stroke, that's where that is. But we're going to actually hit this add a new fill button. So now we have two fills, one on the top and one on the bottom that you can select just by clicking on them. We're going to want to select the one on the bottom here. And I'm going to change the fill color by hitting this drop down box and selecting black. But you can pick whatever color you want. Alternatively, if you hold up shift and click on that color, it brings up this menu where you can change the color this way. You can add in a custom hex code or select it from this picker right here, but I'm just going to leave mine on black since it's a very easy way to show it. So how to add that 3D fill, we just go to this FX button, which stands for add a new effect. Click the FX button. We're going to want to go to distort and transform. And from inside distort and transform, we're going to hit the transform button. It's right in the middle. And this brings up a transform effect menu. The first thing you want to do is make sure you hit this preview button on the bottom so you can actually see what you're doing. And the only things we have to worry about are the move section right here, as well as copies. So move, it says zero pixels, zero pixels. My artboard is set to pixels, but your artboard very well might be set to millimeters or inches or some different measurement. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that you enter in a very small increment. So in this case, I'm going to put 0.5 by 0.5. I've tested this before, so I know it works good. So we're just going to go with that on my setup, but on your setup, that might very well have to be a different number. So just test around if you run into any issues, which I'll cover in just a bit. Under copies, I'm going to select 50, and then I'm just going to hit on one of these boxes here to make that effect apply. And as you can see, it very quickly applied the effect. And what it's doing is it's copying this very small move 50 times. So it's moving a half pixel to the left and a half pixel down 50 times, making this effect, which creates this 3D effect. So if I entered 100, it would end up doubling the overall length of this drop shadow. But I'm going to change this back to 50. And I'm just going to hit OK quick so we can zoom in on how this looks up close on our particular type. So you can tell on the top edge right here, there's a slight jagged edge. And that's why I said it's really important to pick a very small number. So I'm actually going to highlight over my type again. Hit this transform button inside my appearance panel. At any time, you can go in here and make changes inside your appearance panel. So by hitting transform, it brings up this window once again. I'm going to hit that preview button in the lower left hand corner again. And I'm going to change it to 0.25 pixels by 0.25 pixels. And because I halved the size of the overall move distance right here, I'm going to double the size of the copies to 100. So now it looks like it did before again, and this time it's a much smoother transition. So do keep in mind that you need a very small move distance to make sure that it doesn't look really jaggy as it goes down. If I make this a very large number, like two pixels by two pixels, I'll just make this 10 copies. You can see that it has a very distinct and very large jaggy pattern. So do make sure you use a very small number in your overall move choices. But I'm just going to cancel out of that since I don't want that to apply. But that's about it for this tutorial. And do remember, when you select over your type, at any time you can either turn on or off your new fill by clicking the eyeball icon. You can change the color of the fill by hitting the color swatch right here. You can make that fill whatever color you want. You can make some very cool effects that way. You can apply a stroke to your type if you want to do that to add a little bit more custom look to it. I actually kind of like how this white looked. So if you're not familiar with the appearance panel, hopefully this helped you a little bit. The 
appearance panel is seriously one of the coolest things inside Illustrator because you can apply so many varied effects to your type with it. And one of the absolute best parts is this type is still fully live and easy to edit. So if I change it, and I'll just type change it so you can see this really quick. You can tell that it applied all those effects instantly because this is all saved in the actual appearance of this type. So it's very quick and easy to make edits once you've actually developed your style. It's just a very fast and easy way to work that adds for a lot of flexibility. You don't have to do the effects once and then have to fully redo it all over again if you made a mistake or have to change what the word says. It's all saved in the appearance panel. But I really do hope this video was helpful to you. And if it was, please like and favorite. And if you want to see more content like this every week, please subscribe. I do my best to put out new design content just like this every week. Thanks so much for watching.